welcome back to the channel guys if you enjoy this content please hit that like and comment and subscribe to keep me going it really motivates me as i'm seeing a lot of engagement as you guys are emailing me asking me to review your resumes and you know giving you some pointers and today i really want to share with you an amazing story and i already asked for permission to do this but i'm not disclosing the individual but let me go through the entire scenario and how it happened and it just went by so damn quick and this is like more of an inspirational video for any one of you guys who are still looking for a cybersecurity job and you haven't ever had any experience and this is just amazing because it fits all those criteria no experience transitioning from another career only been doing this for no more than a year landing i wouldn't say six-figure job but you know 70 plus is pretty impressive pretty impressive so let me go through the details of what happened and how this all happened i got an email and it was sitting in my spam box for the longest time it was like over two weeks and i finally got back to the individual and there i was like i apologize i did not look in my spam and this was just sitting there i don't even know what triggered it the resume was there just like everyone else that you guys send and i love it please keep on doing it i love reviewing these things and helping you guys out as much as i can uh, dm messages me and sends me this great long email about him obtaining his security plus he already accomplished his google Cybersecurity certification also doing the sock core skills search by john schrand and i'm also done with the sock level one certification from thm so he definitely has this whole thing lined up on what he's trying to accomplish. He has a goal in mind and he only started all this back in November 2023. It hasn't even been a year yet. Fast forward, he tells me about my YouTube channel that, you know, he, he enjoys it. And I appreciate that so much. So what happened in between this time? So I looked at the resume. I was like, OK, you have no experience whatsoever. And then DM says, guess what? I have an interview coming up and it was just a coincidence that I reached out to him. I responded back by saying, no way. That's amazing. We got to get on a call. We have to do some review. And we did. I got on the call with him on a Sunday, let alone. And we spoke for like a good half an hour or so. I gave him some pointers and I think it worked out pretty well. Stay with me on the end of this one because he really asked me a question. I delivered and he came back telling me that it was exactly what was expected from a hiring manager. So I just, you know, I wasn't shocked, but I was pretty amazed that it worked out pretty well. So let me go through the details. I unfortunately can't share any of the, the personal details as far as the resume and anything else. I apologize. I reviewed the resume. I looked at it. It was intriguing. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Now, this person that did not have any experience had a lot of studying under his belt, obtained a lot of certifications within a short period of time within the last year from November 2023. Like I said, I gave some pointers and this DM says, emails me back and says, well, I, I made some adjustments. I have a junior sock role that I'm going to be interviewing tomorrow with five panelists. I was like, wow, that's amazing. Here's one tip that I want to give you guys is that when you have more than two or three people sitting on an interview and especially five, that means you're practically having most majority of the decision makers all within that one interview. The chances of you having a second interview above the five, if there's five panelists or more, is pretty slim, meaning they're trying to get this done you know set and done like they don't want to go through a second interview or a third interview i know we've been through that process if you haven't done that before i've been through that where it's one and then you go to a second interview then there's another two people or another one person and you go like three to four different interviews like you guys just couldn't collaborate and do this all at one shot anyway five people on the panel and it went smooth so you know he was a little nervous obviously anyone would be right because this is your breakthrough this is your your first step into the the, the realm of cybersecurity for the really first time landing this first job it, it's like make it or break it the salary was top notch I, i'm not even gonna joke about it. it it wasn't six figures all right for a junior sock making 70 plus was amazing life-changing for a lot of people 
And for DM, he told me that it, it definitely is. Who wouldn't be if you're not making that much and all of a sudden you switch careers and you land this cybersecurity job that you could only dream of and you've only spent that period of time break into this, right? I sent out a Zoom meeting, so we got together. That was Sunday. His meeting was literally today, Monday. And not too long after, right after my lunch, after I had a big hoagie and a couple of drinks, uh, I meant soda, I ended up getting an email from DM and he said, I got it. I was like, what? That was amazing. And he even said, the last question you told me to ask sealed the deal. Thanks so much. I was like, whoa, it works. I know it works because I use it all the time. If anyone wants to do it to me, I'll be really impressed. I'm going to share that question again with you guys if you didn't catch it when I first said it. And I have done videos on what kind of questions to ask at the end of the interview to really gauge what the hiring manager is going to think to hire you or not. You can really get a feel for it. And DM really got a feel for this after he asked, asked that same question that I told him to. I said it was freaking amazing. Tell me more. Was it technical? And what did they ask? And, and when did you start? Right. And it was just so exciting. So he tells me all the details, right? When he's going to start and, and the, the type of industry. I don't want to get into too much of those details. Those are irrelevant. My point is the question that was proposed at the end of the interview, right? After knowing all your stuff, but I do want to point something out. He did not know a question that was proposed during the interview, but he came back with a resolution and a solution that got the people on that panel, like in awe, like in shock, like what was it, right? So it was a Python scripting question. He doesn't know Python, mind you, he only started cybersecurity for the first, you know, few months uh, of last year until now. Right. So altogether, not many people would know much about Python, especially for a SOC analyst role, which is pretty rare to know that deep of Python knowledge, right? Scripting knowledge or, or just the language knowledge in general. He said that he had some notes and lo and behold, he showed the notebook. He said he had eight notebooks full of notes. I don't know how he showed it, but it was a video call. It wasn't in person. The question that was asked of him regarding the Python he had in his notes and he had an answer specifically answering the same question that they just asked and they were just like impressed like as if he forecasted something that they were going to ask and, and luckily you know if it was me at eight notebooks i like i wouldn't even know where to look so that was such a impressive moment for him during that interview that i think this is what sealed the deal at the very end of the interview he basically asked this right at the very end and when they ask you do you have any other questions for us this is what he said i told him that my goal was for all the five people on the panel the interview panel to collectively look back at this moment and agree that giving me this opportunity was the best professional decision they have ever made let's think about that for a second you're asking whether it's one guy or five guys and five guys, the burger, right? Anyway, the, 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 that one question that you asked them at the very end is enough to gauge the commitment of this hiring manager to see where they are with deciding if they want to hire you or not. How does that work? So if you say to them something along the lines of what I'm going to tell you, or you can modify it to however you feel like it will fit the scenario at that given time. And you go to them and you just look at them because after the whole interview, you answered all these questions. You explain about your experience and how you are as a person. You go and ask. So you basically say at this point in time, what was it that brought me here for you to interview me? What intrigued you? What was it that I have on my resume that I can perform? What was it on my resume that I can show commitment to this organization? What was it on my resume that attracted you to me? to bring me here in front of you today to be interviewed for this position? Or is there anything holding you back on making a decision for bringing me on board to complete this job? At that very moment, if they like you and you answered everything to their liking, no one's perfect, mind you, remember that. No one's gonna ever be perfect. But if you get to the point where they say, oh, we like your experience, we felt like your resume had the qualifications that can fill this role, it's you, you get a gauge 
people where they are. They didn't bring you on for an interview because they felt like you didn't qualify. You qualified, obviously, on paper. Now it's time to seal the deal by asking them a question that they can't avoid. They have to answer you. But whether they give you a realistic answer or they're a little pushing back like, oh, you know, we just decided to bring you on because we felt like, right? They start using past tense. We, they felt like you, you were a fit, right? Things like that, trigger words, right? Key words that may tell you a sign that you, you made it or you didn't make it. So just, I, I just wanted to point that out. It, it was amazing. I, and DM asked this question. I want to quote him. I told him that my goal was for all five of the people on this interview panel to collectively look back on this moment and agree that giving me this opportunity was the best decision they ever made. And you know what he said? You know what he told me right after that? Within five minutes after that call, they told him that he was hired, which is insane. Not only did that, did they tell him that five minutes after the interview call, someone called him and said, we want him here. We want to hire this person. He was also told during the interview that they have other candidates that they were considering. Whether you want to believe that or not, it's all up. It's very debatable. That may be just common words or common phrases that hiring managers use to make you feel like you're not the only one. You're not that special. I just want to kind of give this shout out to DM. I, I'm really proud of him. After I had that conversation with him on Sunday, he was so ecstatic and he felt like everything was just lining up for him. Uh, me reaching out to him was on top of that. It made me feel like, whoa, that's amazing. Uh, I, I made him feel happy that I actually scheduled this and he had this whole call on Monday. So we kind of just went through, you know, some of the scenarios. We didn't, I didn't really like interview him. I was just more like kind of guiding him since he's like, getting into cybersecurity for the first time. I could honestly say at this point, I, I'm not like boasting about myself, but he seemed pretty happy where he was uh, after speaking to him. And of course, he's probably even happier now that he knows that he landed this nice SOC analyst job for the very first time. And this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. I do want to share with you guys, if you stayed here this long, DM is was not nowhere near a cybersecurity or IT engineer or, you know, anything to do with computers. He worked at an oil plant, an oil refinery, which is like total opposite, more or less, right? Just totally different. Let's just put it that way. I wouldn't say opposite. I don't even know what's opposite of IT. I Opposite of IT will like be uh, writing letters on a paper or something, right? Non-IT stuff or using the typewriter. But even though I think the typewriter is still technical. But anyway, I'm jumping off track. I'm really excited for DM and I, I wish him the best of luck. And of course, you guys, if you have anything and I know I've been reaching out to you, you guys have been reaching out to me. I'm doing my best to, you know, filter all that down and responding back to you guys. I may have a little delay, but I'm trying my best. It, it is overwhelming. At the same time, I enjoy doing it. You guys, uh, you know, even DM was like, oh, you know, I, I'm laid back. I'm, I I gain nothing from this, guys. I, I truly can honestly say I gain nothing from this. It's not even anything I can do. Uh, I just feel like it's my time to kind of, you know, pay it forward. Uh, I use this as a gateway to do that. I mean, I could have chose any other social media platform, Instagram, TikTok, whatever. Uh, I just feel like YouTube has more engagement because I'm able to interact with the comments. There's live streams and there's community posts. I don't feel like I could do that with other platforms and I just I'm just so used to YouTube. So again, as a favor, you know, for me to do things like this to keep me motivated and keep me going to make videos like this is just, you know, my my end goal and I want to be really honest with you, I would love one day for myself to have like the silver play button. Like that's just my goal. Like I always found that intriguing and I that's a goal of mine. You know, also passing certain certifications at, at first time, you know, like was also a goal. That play button is definitely a goal of mine. I just, I, I'm just so intrigued with it. I just wanted to share that with you guys. So that's pretty much it. I, I want to thank all of you here for this uh, story. If you have any more questions, comment below. How did someone that did not have years of experience or any experience land this first cybersecurity SOC analyst role within less than a year of just 
getting a certification, you know, cybersecurity, uh, Google cybersecurity, security plus, and he, but he's just adding on top of that. And I can say the formatting of his resume was, was clean. I, I suggested a few items and he made some modifications, but even before the modifications, he landed that interview position. So it's, it's a combination of all these different things that leads to where you can get to. All right. So I just want to leave it at that. Thank you guys. And I'll see you guys again really soon. Take care.